So the uh, video is going to look at reviewing a practice practical for IGCSE. So let's start off with the first practical looking at using a displacement method to measure the volume of an object. So we're trying to find the internal volume of a test tube um, and we've got diagrams to show the three different scenarios. You've just got a measuring cylinder with water, you've got a measuring cylinder with the test tube which has been filled with water and a measuring cylinder with a test tube which has been filled with air. So those are our different tests. Okay, so uh, the first scenario, just the measuring cylinder is going to measure the volume of water. The second one is going to measure the volume of water and the volume of the glass. And the third scenario is going to measure the volume of the water, the volume of the glass and the volume of air inside the test tube. Okay. So that would be the one we expect to get the biggest volume. Okay, so um, we've got 80 centimeters cubed of water in the measuring cylinder. So um, the measuring cylinder can be more precise. So actually my measuring cylinder ended up with 81 centimeters cubed as long as it's close to 80 that's fine and then once I put the uh, test tube in which filled with water it ended up being 88 so clearly the volume of glass is 7 centimeters cubed so we know now that now the volume of glass so uh, just in terms of these measurements a measuring cylinder's resolution is one millimeter all measurements can be done to the nearest millimeter so you uh, all of these are to the nearest milliliter or the centimeter cubed, essentially. So remove the test tube from, and we're going to now do this scenario with the air in the test tube. Okay, so uh, again, it says about 70 centimeters cubed, so I actually had 69. And then we're doing it open-ended first, and I'm making sure I push it down vertically to make sure uh, we're not allowing any water into the test tube. And it, when I did that, I got 93 centimeters cubed. Okay, so uh, the change in water level is clearly 24 centimeters cubed. And because we know the volume of the glass, because we measured it previously, we've now got a measurement of the volume of the internal volume or the volume of air. Um, another way we could have measured the volume is to actually just fill the test tube and then pour the test tube into the measuring cylinder. Um, but I actually put the test tube inside the measuring cylinder before I poured it to make sure all of the water that left the test tube went into the measuring cylinder so we're not spilling any. Then I got a volume of 16. So we can see that's pretty close to the 17 we've calculated already. Okay, so the two experiments, there are po there's possibilities of sources of inaccuracy. Um, so suggest two reasons why the volume of air using the first method may be inaccurate and why the volume of water in the second method might be inaccurate. So with the first method, um, you have to push the test tube underwater, which means my finger is also slightly underwater and that increases the volume that I measured. So we've, the volume is probably slightly too big. And the other thing is um, we might have um, some water in the test tube from the first experiment they did because remember the first thing we did is we filled the test tube with water under it and then we turned it upside down and pushed it full of air but there might have still been some water in it from the first one so we're not actually going to get the volume of air inside the test tube we get the volume of air plus the volume of water and then in terms of the second experiment um we're pouring water from the test tube into the measuring cylinder so some water might stick in the test tube and not go into the measuring cylinder giving us a smaller uh, volume of water than we should have done. And we also have used the measuring cylinder several times at this point, so we might have actually had some water left from the previous measurements, which would increase the value of the volume of water. Um, but anything here that suggests misreading the measuring cylinder, introducing parallax error, is not valid. You shouldn't misread the measuring cylinder and you shouldn't introduce a parallax error. You know the techniques to use so that you don't do that. So there, there shouldn't be that in any of your measurements. So in this experiment, you are going to investigate the change in temperature of water at room temperature. Okay, so you're provided with 100 centimeters cubed of hot water and a supply of water at room temperature. 
measure the room temperature water uh, so mine i got 23 degrees room temperature is usually anywhere between 20 25 so we know what kind of a sensible answer would be uh, so again our thermometer the resolution is one degree so we should have all of our temperature measurements to uh, one degree or, or no decimal places in terms of the precision okay so we're gonna essentially what we're gonna do we're gonna measure the temperature uh, to start with, we're going to add some room temperature water, measure the temperature again, and so on and so forth. So, uh, first of all, our units of volume and temperature. Our My initial temperature, again, we're supposed to be using hot water, so you're expected to have a high temperature here, sort of like the 70s, 80s kind of range. And then we're going to be adding 20 centimeter cube interval so there we go and then i measured the temperature having done each of those and we'd be expecting smaller changes in temperature each time we did this addition so and then we can plot a graph so what a lot of people are going to do wrong here is they're going to start the y-axis from zero which doesn't make sense because our smallest temperature is in the 40s so why would we start at zero so our minimum temperature or mine was at least 44 so i'm going to start my y-axis at 40 um the maximum temperature was 84 so we need to be able to plot a total range of 44 um, on the y-axis and that gives me a y scale of 10 so it's going to go up like this then the x scale we our volume was initially zero it goes up to 100 so we need to go up in 20s so let's do that yeah and we have our scale and we can label our axes with units we can then plot all of our points and draw a smooth curve of best fit so you will lose marks for your curve of best fit if it's wobbly so if you see the line wobbling all over the place or if you see any sudden changes in direction on the line that will cost you your best fit line mark as well okay so during the experiment some heat is lost from the hot water of the surroundings and also you've added room temperature at random times suggest improvements so you have to be specific here you have to address these two concerns that they've outlined so they said one problem is losing energy to the surroundings well we need to insulate the beaker and add a lid that fixes that problem that's one mark we also want to fix the problem of adding water at random times. So we want to add water at regular intervals instead. That corrects the problem that has been identified. Okay, so that concludes this practical looking at displacement method and also, um, I guess, thermal physics. Uh,